Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be taking a look at how you can create message boxes for your site using the message boxes widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. We are on the page where you can see some examples of how this widget can be used and its possible stylization options. Some of these include different fonts, styles, color variations, and more. You can also combine this widget with other elements you like. Essentially, you can combine the widgets from the key add-ons collection to your heart's content. So, let's take a look at how you can use this message boxes widget and customize it. Head over to the back end, and in the Elementor sidebar, search for message boxes. There it is. Now, drag it over to the right. And this is how a message box looks by default. It has some placeholder content that will replace right away. To change the title, you need the title field. Then just type over the existing text. Give me a sec to type all of mine in. There we go. Then we have the text field where we can replace the dummy text. My intended design doesn't include any text other than the title, so I'll simply erase this. OK. Next, we can replace the icon. You have a choice between using the icon library and uploading an SVG. If you just click here, it will open the icon library. And then you can search for the icon you want. The library contains several icon packs, so there's a pretty big selection. I'll use a bookmark one. Hmm, this. Insert. And we can also change the close icon, that's this X here. And for this one, I'll upload an SVG. Generally, SVG is always the best format for icons and it lets you use custom design, so I highly recommend it. OK. First, I need to remove this. Now, click here to upload an SVG. And the icon I want is already in my media library and it's automatically selected as the last uploaded image. So, all I need to do now is click on Insert Media. And there it is. Now, the set of options underneath this one are developer tools. When we open them, we can see there is just one option here. And we can switch its setting to yes and get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. So we get this text. And we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Alright, that's it. Let's move on to the style tab and see what we have in there. The first thing we have in here is the option to pick the title tag for our title text. It's set to h3 by default, but you can change that to any of the other h tags or even the p tag. I'll switch mine to h4. Then we have the title color option. You can replace the color simply by dragging the slider or by adding a hex code below. I won't be using either as I'm happy with this practically black color for my title. Following that, we have the title typography option. With these options, we can pick the font family for our title. You can scroll through this list or search for the font if you know its name. You can also pick the font size here. I'll set 21 pixels for mine. Then we have the weight option, where we can pick a number value to determine the font weight. So, this lets you fine tune it. Still, I'll leave mine on default. Then we have the text transform option, which we can use to make the title uppercase, lowercase, capitalized, or normal, which is the same as our default. And using style, we can make our text normal, or turn it italic, or oblique. Following that, the decoration lets us add an underline, an overline, a line through, or we can use none of these. Then the line height, which you can use to get a bit more space around the title. We can see the elements spread out, but as I only have one line of text for my title, it's a bit hard to show. Still, like this, you can affect the space around the title. And I'll do that by switching the value to pixels and setting 30. Finally, the letter spacing option lets us create more space between letters. OK, that's it for the typography options. Below this, we have two options for the text. One is to change its color and the other is to change its typography settings. Since I don't have any text, I can skip these. But you should know they work just the same as the color and typography options we had for the title. Moving on, we have the icon position option. This is for the icon in front of the title. 
and we can change its position from the top to the middle or the bottom. I'll leave mine in the top position for now. Next, we have the icon color option. You can change the icon color as you would anything else using the slider or by adding a hex code. The code I'm using will make my icon practically black so it will match the text color. OK. Then we have the icon size option. You can use the slider to adjust it or type in a value. I'll do the latter and set 23 pixels for my icon. Below this, we can adjust the size of the close icon. It's the same principle as the option above it. So you can enlarge the icon if you want. Simply use the slider or type in a new value. OK. There's also the close icon color option where you can change the color of your close icon. I'm going to set a solid black here. There we go. And after this, we have the close icon hover color. In here, I'll set my icon to be black with a degree of transparency when it's hovered over. There. So it'll be just a shade lighter when someone hovers over it. Following that, we have the background type option. It comes with two choices, classic and gradient. With the gradient background type, you can set a two color gradient fill for your background. You can set the first color here. Let's say this one. And then you can use the location option to adjust how much space it will take up. And we have the same option for the second color, as well as its location. Now we have two types of gradient backgrounds, linear and gradient. If you stick with the linear type, you'll be able to shift the angle where the color blend occurs. But if you change that to radial, you'll be able to pick the origin point of your first color using the options available in this drop down menu. So we have settings like center right or bottom center and so on. OK, I'll put this back so we can return to the classic background type as that's the one I want to use for this element. With the classic, we can change the background color the same way we would any other color. I'm going to make mine a similar shade of blue to the default setting. I think it's a nice gentle shade. However, if you prefer something more vivid or patterned, there's also the option to upload an image as the background of your message box. Alright, after this we have the box border radius option. This will let us curve the corner edges of the element. As I increase the values here, you can see the angle softening. And then we get this curve. I'll put it back as I don't want to use it right now. Alright, next we have the spacing style set of options. Here we have things like the icon margin. This creates a sort of buffer around the icon on the left. If I start to increase the values evenly, we can see on the right how everything shifts. Since this doesn't look all that great, it would be better to adjust each side of the margin separately. To do that, click here to delink the fields. And then just set the values you want for each field. I'll put 4 pixels at the top, 18 on the right, and that looks nice. I'll leave the other two blank. OK. Underneath, we have the text margin top option. Since I don't have any text, it's hard to show it, but if you increase its value, you'll get more space between the title and the text. So you get more space hereabouts. Finally, we have the box padding option. This gives us padding for the entire element. You can increase it to get more of a buffer for your message. And that's it for our settings. The last options tab, Advanced, has several useful options for positioning, responsiveness, entrance animations, and more, but since it's available for all Elementor widgets and not unique to our message boxes widget, we won't be covering it in this tutorial. Now, I'll make a few more message boxes so you can see how they would look together. However, I'll skip ahead with the video because we've already covered the process. And here we are now. My message boxes are all done. I stylized these to have different looks within the group, but you can make them look the same if you like. It's up to you to see which of the possibilities offered by this plugin work best with the style and design of your site. I'll update to save my work. Just a sec. And now let me show you how it works. If you click to close a message box, it will disappear from your view. But once you refresh the page, it will be back in its place.
Now, if we look back on the landing page, we can see the different things we can do with the message boxes widget and the potential variations we can make using it. Here, for example, are the versions I made for this tutorial, but the options we covered will help you make message boxes like any of these here. You can copy the style and look from these examples, or you can opt to make something completely different. In either case, I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making message boxes can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its message boxes widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thank you for watching.